It's the name we pray in. It's the name we're baptized in. It's the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Well, hallelujah. I don't know about nobody else, but that makes me excited. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Out throughout the Old Testament, there was many patriarchs wanting to know his name. And they wasn't revealed the name of Jesus. But the name was revealed to a virgin by the name of Mary. When the angel declared that you're going to have a son, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And you will conceive in you a son, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he will be a savior, savior to your people. Hallelujah. That ought to make you glad today. I know things that Abraham didn't know. I know things that Isaac didn't know. And so do you. We know the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. At that name, ever a demon in hell trembles at the name of Jesus. Every, 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 every creation and all creation in heaven and earth and even beneath the earth, takes notice at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn with me this morning to Philippians and the fourth chapter. Philippians, the fourth chapter. And if you would be so kind to stand as we read the Word of God together. Hallelujah. I'd give you just a moment to turn there. Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse... Number four, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you so much today. We thank you, Lord God, for the holy written word. And we thank you, Lord God, truly for the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus. We, we know we can do nothing outside that name. But in that name, we can speak with new tongues. We can take up serpents. We can cast out devils. When we will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover at the name of Jesus. We thank you at that name, every stronghold, every chain, all bondage is broken at the name of Jesus. Lord, we just pray this morning, as this word goes forth, that hearts will be changed, minds will be at ease. We cast down every imagination this morning that brings itself and exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. I'm afraid as I speak this morning, there are many of you sitting here today that have lost. Your joy. Well, I got one amen. That's why David prayed, return unto me the joy of my salvation. See, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. The joy of the Lord. I hear people say all the time, I'm talking about church folk. I, I, I don't, I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about heathens. Although they say the same things. They say things like, I just want to be happy. I deserve to be happy. I, I, I don't know why I can't be happy. 
I'm a good person. I, I, I deserve to be happy. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There's a big difference. If you want to be happy, I'll tell you what the Bible says to be happy. The Bible says happy is the man that wins souls. You want to be happy, preach the gospel. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. You, you got called into the ministry when you called upon Jesus. Amen. You can't, you say, well, I don't, I, you, you, I may not, you may not know much about the word, but you know what God did for you. But I'm not talking about happiness because most people, uh, happiness is, is dictated by events or people or, or things. Uh, people get happy when they get a new job. People get happy when they go on vacation. They get happy when they get a new house. And they get happy when... But I can tell you the house won't stay new. The car won't be always be new. And the vacation memories will fade. And so will your happiness. But the joy of the Lord is a whole other creature. If I can say it like that. The joy of the Lord comes from Him Himself. It's, it's something that's deposited into your spirit through His Spirit. How do you get this joy? When you become a child of God, that's, once again, i got to go back to David. He said, return unto me the joy of my salvation. So, joy comes through salvation. But salvation is not only, I don't got to die and go to hell. If that's all you see your salvation as, you got a very low view of what Jesus did for you. Hallelujah. Now, thank God you don't got to die and go to hell. But I can tell you this morning, let me very, be very, very clear. If you're not born again today and you die in your sins, you will go to hell. And you say, well, that ain't, you shouldn't preach like that. Why should I not? It's the truth. Well, you shouldn't just come out and say it like that. Yes, I should. So let me just be very clear and up front this morning. If you don't know Jesus and the free pardon of sin, if you've not been washed in the blood of Jesus, I can't get no help in here this morning. I'm preaching way better than you, amen, and if you've not been born again, you will die. You'll be eternally separated from God. You think you're miserable now. You think circumstances are bad now. You don't got a clue. You say, well, I'm going to get back to preaching in a minute. You say, well, I, I'm living on hell on earth. No, you're not. You might be going through some rough times. You might be going up the rough side of the mountain. You, you, you might be at your wit's end. You, you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he is the God that delivers him out of them all. And this morning, if you're not on God's side and he's not on your side, every affliction you face, you will face it on your own. See, the people of God, we deal with the same thing the world deals with. But as I said this morning, we got someone who fights with us. See, I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting for the victory that Jesus secured. Now, let me get back. So, if all of you see is I don't got to go to hell, you have a real low view of salvation. Because in that salvation includes wholeness, soundness, peace, joy, healing, wholeness, preservation and yeah i'm going to go on and say it i know it's a dirty word in a lot of churches but i'm going to say that prosperity amen now i'm not always talking about the do re me the the benjamins but you get part of that too amen the bible says the gold is mine and the silver is mine you think he put that here for the devil's crowd well of course he didn't he put it here for the people of God. Even the wealth of the wicked. Come on now, folks. Even the wealth of the wicked is laid up for who? The righteousness. Well, how in the world? You say, well, how do I be righteous? You're in right standing with him. I got to get back to the joy of the Lord. So... The joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is your strength. So if you're feeling weak and you're feeling wore out, you need some joy. I wish I had a ball of joy, this detergent. I squirted it out. Because some of you, that's the only joy you got. 
Some of you just running on sud this morning. If you, but to keep the joy, once you got it, we, we, the kids sang that song. I got the joy, joy, joy down, down in my heart. I can't get no help in here. I got the joy, 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 joy. Where? We're down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy. Come on. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I can tell you how you, you get the joy in the Lord in His presence. In His presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. But if you've lost your joy this morning, I'm going to help you. Uh, get it back this morning. I, I, I can't give it to you, but I can tell you how you can get it. Uh, and I can tell you how to keep it once you got it. Can you say amen? The first thing you must do is renew your mind. See, Joyce Meyer, you ever heard of her? She sold over three million copies of a book called The Battlefield of the Mind. And I don't figure that lost people's buying many copies of that book. I believe it's uh, the church that's buying the book, The Battlefield of the Mind. Well, I can tell you before she wrote the book, that's where the battle always is. Uh, it's in the mind. Uh, you'll either be an overcomer or you're going to be defeated. Uh, what's going on between your ears? The voices and the, the thoughts, the ideals and the suggestions that the devil throws at you. See, that's how he steals your joy because if he can get you to thinking that you ain't no good, that you ain't worthy, that you're sick and you're going to die, that you've got some kind of fatal disease, the devil tried, he tried his best to get me convinced that I was going to die a young man. But I kept saying this, a, a thousand may fall at my one side and ten thousand at the other side, but it shall not uh, come nigh me. I don't care how my aunt forefathers died. I don't care how they may have went out of here. That ain't me. I'm telling you, i got to transfer. I'm under the... The pavilion, the secret place. Uh, you got to renew your mind because the fiery darts uh, of the enemy. That's why Paul said, Now stand therefore and take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. I'm telling you, that's what the enemy's got. He's got like a Gatling gun and he's constantly throwing these, th these fiery darts at your mind. Nobody loves me, nobody cares. My past, my past, my past. If he can keep you stuck in your past, you'll never move forward. That's why Paul said this one thing I do. Can you, now think about this. Of all the revelation that Paul had about Jesus, he didn't go to no, hey, listen, he didn't go to seminary. Matter of fact, he wasn't even there at the, at, when Jesus broke the bread and said, this is my body, and he took the cup. He said, this is the blood. Paul wasn't even there, but yet he could teach the church about it. He said, because the Lord revealed it to me. All the revelation he had of Jesus. So much revelation that a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him to keep him from exalting himself above what he should. All of that, he said, but this one thing I do. This one thing I've comprehended. I put the past behind me. You ain't going to do that unless you renew your mind. I put the past behind me and I press forward. See, there ain't no retreat in the army of God. Yeah, we may wave a white flag of surrender, but as a sis said, it's to the king of kings. I yield to you today. The army of God is always marching forward. Can you say amen? We press forward. But you won't do that with a renewed mind. You'll get in the mullet grubs. The devil will tell you how bad things are. Just look out here. How bad the world is. How bad the economy is. How bad the political parties are. If he can get your mind wrapped up in some other thinking, that's why we take that whole armor. That's why we have the shield of faith. And we have the helmet of salvation to protect our minds, to protect our hearts. 
You have to renew your mind. And the only way you can renew your mind is by the Word of God. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, brother, and I beseech you, the church, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. There's too much of the church conforming to the world. Come on now. Conforming in our action. Conforming in our speeches to be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Hallelujah. When I, when I grew up, uh, when I, I remember when the Transformers came out on you. Nobody looked at me. What are you talking about? Everybody know the Transformers? More than meets the eye? Megatron? Yeah. Well, I was transformed. My mind is being transformed by the Word of God. And, and because it's being transformed and being renewed, I, I know the will of God. I know the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. People say, well, I wish I knew what God wanted for me. I wish I knew the will of God. i tell you how you can find out. It won't be coming to me. It won't be necessarily going to a prophet. But it'll be getting in the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. The counselor can't find it out for you. The doctor won't be able to tell you what it is. But the B-I-B-L-E. It'll transform your mind. And that's the only way you'll ever keep the joy of the Lord is have your mind, uh, your emotions. See, I, I, I say this again because some of you ain't got it yet. Man is triune, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is your, your spirit is settled. When you get born again, it, it, that, that, that their spirit belongs to Christ. That's why the Bible says you are bought with a price. But your mind don't get saved. Your emotions don't get saved. Your will don't get saved. That's why if you don't safeguard yourself, you'll do the same old things you did before you got saved. And sometimes even worse. You want to be a successful Christian? A successful mother, a successful father, a successful child. You want to be a successful in ministry? You got to do it the Bible way. And God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then... Thou shalt have good success. And then thou shalt prosper. The only way to have the joy of the Lord is to have your mind renewed. Because your mind since birth has been trained to think negative. Always think the worst. Always see the worst. That's why we, some of us still got judgmental spirits. That's why some of us are still critical. Straighten your halos up. I've been there. I've been there. I've had the holier than now attitude until I got my mind renewed. Amen. And you hang around people like that, you'll be critical. But when you hang out with Jesus, I said, when you hang out with Jesus, you see people like he does. Amen. You love them in spite of themselves. You love them in spite of what they look like and act like and talk like. But you love them enough to tell the truth. So you've got to have your mind renewed. And, and Isaiah said something very interesting. He said, the mind, the mind that has stayed upon the Lord shall be kept in perfect peace. I mean, wouldn't you just like to have peace? Wouldn't you like to have peace in your home? Are oh, you meddling now, preacher? Yes, I am. Thanks for noticing. But the mind that has stayed up on the Lord should be kept in perfect peace. And even going back to the text this morning, Paul tells us even how to think. You have to train your mind. How do you do that? You cast down imagination. You bring into captivity every thought. He says, think on things that appear just, lovely, honest, 
good report, if they have virtue. Think on these things. And I can tell you the Word has all those things, and that's what we think upon. You must disciple and discipline your thoughts, and you're the only one that can do it. I'm too busy trying to control my thoughts to help you with yours. Amen. Straighten your halos up. You know I'm telling you the truth. The enemy will throw thoughts at you. I ha I've had thoughts as a, as a born-again believer that I didn't have when I was a heathen. You got to know where they come from. And then when they come, you automatically have to do something with those thoughts or you will lose your joy. And you'll be a miserable Christian. And there's way too many miserable Christians. We should be the most joyful people on planet earth. Can you say amen? See, I don't have to, I don't have to be out on the lake today to be joyful. I don't have to be down at the AVT park to be joyful today. I can't get no help in here. I don't have to be down at the horse park or the casino or, or wherever people go on Sundays and sell the house of the Lord to have joy. You got six days a week to do those things. Amen. I don't got to have... Oh, Lord, I'm going to stay off of that. And the next thing to have joy and the joy and then brings the peace is you've got to learn to control your tongue. Yeah, I am meddling now. You, you got to, you, you say, well, I, I, you know, I, and I've heard preachers preach it from the pulpit, and, and they just don't know no better because it's not true. Well, if you think it, you might as well say it. Or if you think it, you don't say it and sin twice. See, the world says, well, if you think it, you might as well say it. And I've heard preachers say, well, if you think it, you might as well, and if you say it, you sin twice. Not bad thoughts are not sin. It's when you act upon them. It's when they become sin. But your thoughts are released by your tongue. Jesus said, out of the treasure of a good heart come good things. But out of the treasures of an evil heart come evil things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You want to know what you're about? You want to know what's in your heart? Listen to your mouth. Listen to what's coming out of it. It'll tell you what's in your heart. You won't have to wonder. And if you don't know, Get your phone out and record yourself for about a day. You'll find out what's in your heart because it's spewing out of your mouth. And what comes out of your mouth will not only steal your joy, but it can steal the, steal the joys of those around you because death and life. See, I didn't get to say enough about the tongue. I felt really rushed last Sunday. I, I, I just got to be honest with you. I really felt rushed last Sunday. And I, I really didn't do the message justice, I don't feel like, but that's water on the bridge. But let me go back to the tongue since we are talking about it because I made mention of it last week. James says this thing right here, your tongue, is a world of iniquity, full of deadly poison. Set on far of nature and the far of hell. He said, no man can tame the tongue. Man can't. But the Holy Ghost of God can sure. Hey, orbit ain't the only thing that'll clean up a dirty mouth. The Spirit of God will change your speech. Now listen, I know we, we, we Pentecostal people here, we, we, when we say we'll speak with new tongues, we, we automatically think about praying in an unknown language uh, but I also believe that you will speak in a new language I didn't talk like I I don't talk now like I did then I got a new language I got a language of love a, a language of faith a language of peace a language of joy somebody say amen yeah. hallelujah you, you can't have joy and you can't have peace when you just let your tongue run amok once again just like your thoughts you're, you're the only one that controls your tongue your, it's your decision as to what comes out of your mouth. Let me help you out this morning. Let me read this. I, I, I've got a lot of verses, and I'm just hitting the highlights. But this one I want to read to you. And Proverbs 15, perk your ears up and listen to this. Because I, I know most of you may not know this verse. If you've got trouble in your home, always fighting and bickering. Now, I know that nobody, nobody, that don't happen to nobody here, but what I'm saying, if, if, if you want to help a family out that's, you know, that's always bickering and fighting in their home, you can help them. I, I know that doesn't apply to anybody here. Proverbs 15, verse 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath. Some of you just got to get the last word in. 
I'm the same way at my house. I always get the last word in. I say, yes, ma'am, Minerva, whatever you say. A soft answer turns away wrath. You, you don't got to say everything that comes to your mind. You don't always got to be right in every circumstance. Let our speech be seasoned with salt. Full of grace. Is our speech really like that? A soft tongue turns away wrath. But a grievous words, grievous words stir up anger. A, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Listen to me. The eyes of the Lord are every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. You got to learn to control your tongue. 95% of all your arguments in your home could be, can, could be resolved if you just know when to shut your mouth. Well, that ain't how we are. I, I, I'm just, I just say what's on my mind. I, that's just the way we are. That's the way I was raised. Well, you need some new raising. That's just how we are in our family. Well, my God, get in the family of God and let the Spirit of God control your tongue. We just tell people how it is. We don't mean no harm, but that's just who we are. Oh, please, stop it. Stop that nonsense. Read the book. Amen. If not, you're going to be a miserable. You may be, yeah, you may be a Christian, and you may be on your way to heaven, but you're going to have a miserable, miserable life. I mean, don't you get tired of arguing every day? Don't you get tired of the conflict every day? My Lord, I've been there. It ain't good. See, when you learn to control your tongue, you'll create an atmosphere of joy. Come on, folks. I've said this many times. I use this analogy. If y'all had bacon this morning or ham cooked at your house, if I go there now, I could say, oh, y'all probably had, y'all had sauce this morning for breakfast, didn't you? Because there's, there's an aroma. There's a lingering. There's a linger of that smell. Same way when harsh words and arguments and strife and contention has been in the home. You can go there because it, it leaves an atmosphere. It leaves an odor, if you will. You, you can tell when there's strife in the home. You must learn to control your tongue. And you must, you must to keep your joy, submit your will to God. Too many Christians want to do their own thing. But the scripture says stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And I know we often view stubbornness as a strong trait. And yes, I understand when it comes to certain things, we should be stubborn. And when, and when I say that, I mean we don't compromise the word of God. We don't bow down to the culture and change the message to fit the world. That's okay to be stubborn in those things. But when you don't submit your will to God, the Bible accounts that as idolatry. Do you, when you refuse to submit your will to God, you're not going to have joy. And we see a generation today that have no respect. They, they do their own thing. They, they have no respect for God. They have no respect for authority. They have no respect for parents. They have no respect for government. No respect for church, church government. They, 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 they're always going to prove their point that they're right. And they wonder why they have no joy. Today you must submit your will to God. When you said yes to Jesus, you, were, you signed over your rights. You know, a lot of times we hear something like that, 
in a court case where a parent signed over their rights to a child. They just signed over their rights. That means they have no authority. They have no, they have no, no right of any say what goes on in that child's life anymore when they sign over their rights. Well, that's what happened when you and I got come to Christ. We signed over our rights. We don't have no more say about our life. It's about Him. It's what does He say? We do what He wants us to do. We go where He wants us to go. We live under the kingdom of God. And, and another thing about the kingdom of God, Romans says this, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you really want to know if you're walking in the kingdom? Do you have the joy of the Lord? But I'll tell you this, if you not submit your will to God today, you don't have joy. Oh, you might have some things that make you happy, but you don't have the joy of the Lord. See, submitting your will to God will either give life to the joy of the Lord, or if you're being stubborn, it will actually kill the opportunity to have the joy of the Lord in your life. How do you submit your will? It's by doing what this book says. One time, really don't ask me why, but I was watching on YouTube. It's been several years ago. And, I, I, and, I, and I, that's why I say I can learn something from anybody. I, I can, if, if they're preaching the word, I can learn something from anybody. I don't care Baptist method. I, I don't care whatever brand you want to put on yourself. I, 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 if, I, can listen, I can learn from you if you got some truth. I'm not closed-minded. And I was watching a snake handling preacher. Oh, yeah, they was getting down, let me tell you. And, uh, and this little guy, I say that like I'm big, but anyway, this little preacher, was he got up and he said, people get up and say, I'm saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. He said, I'll tell you how sanctified you are. The best definition I ever heard in my life. And I bet he didn't go to, I bet he didn't go to seminary either. He said, I'll tell you how sanctified you are. As much of this book as you do. That's how sanctified you are. He ain't wrong, folks. He ain't wrong at all. Amen. Now, we're not going to handle snakes later. Don't, don't, don't get that twisted. But you want to get up and talk about how sanctified you are? This is, this is the guy. This is the meter to tell you how sanctified you are. As much of this book as you do. You have to come to the place where this book is right and you're wrong. And every word of this book is true. Amen. It's God breathed. It's God inspired. It is God. On and when you abide by this book, and this book is your, is your rule, it's, it's, it guides your faith, it guides your life, it guides your home, you will have joy. Today, once again, the joy comes in His presence. I often wonder why would, why would someone not want to be in the presence of the Lord? And I understand this is not the only place, thank God, you can be in the presence of the Lord because His presence is everywhere, but you have to enter in. And we have this, we have this awesome time of worship during church. And people don't engage. And, then, and then, then you want to tell me I want to be close to God. You're as close to God as you want to be. In His presence, in His presence is the fullness of joy. Do you love being miserable? Do you love it? Then get out of it. And the way to get out is to get in His presence. John Wrote three times, one in the gospel and, and, two, and two of his epistles. He wrote this phrase, that your joy may be full. And the first time when John, he was quoting Jesus. Jesus said, you've not asked anything, but you will ask in my name. And when you ask in my name, I will do it. That your joy may be full. He don't want us a little bit of joy or three quarters of a tank of joy. He wants us to be full of joy. And then little John says that your joy, I wrote these things to you, that your joy may be full. What things, John? That truly our fellowship is with the Lord Jesus. And because we have fellowship with them, we have fellowship one with another. You're not going to have true joy unless you learn to fellowship with the brother. 
Coming in as soon as service, service starts and leaving, that's not fellowship. Amen or oh me. But when you learn to have fellowship with a brother, because John said that would cause your joy to be full. And when you have true fellowship with Jesus, that's the only people you want to be around. Amen. And then he also says it in 2 second, second John. He said, I got a lot more to say to you. But I want to say it to you face to face that our joy may be full. See, there's something about face to face fellowship. That will cause your joy to be full. Oh yeah, I understand. There's, there's family. There's, there's family problems in the house of God. We all got it. We, we all got it. We ain't all got it right yet. And sometimes we say stupid things and act foolish. But the fellowship brings the joy of the Lord. Because we're two or three are together, and He's there in the midst. It's a beautiful thing. The fellowship with the Lord and with one another. Jesus says, let me just read this to you. Listen, this is, this is the message still for the church. In Luke 10, he says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. And over, over all, over all. I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, all means all. Over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, withstanding in this, rejoice not. Yeah, we, 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 we guilty of that sometimes a little bit. Don't rejoice that spirits are subject to you, but rather. Rejoice. Because your name. Oh, I, 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 I can't get no help in here. Because your names are written in heaven. And when Jesus, listen, verse 21, in that hour, Jesus Rejoice. Now I got to think about Jesus rejoices that our names are in the book in heaven. If that makes Jesus rejoice, then it ought to make you and I be very rejoiceful that our names are written in heaven. And he said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Aren't you glad you know who Jesus is today? Even so the Father, so it is seem good in thy sight. If you have nothing else to rejoice, your life may be falling apart at the seams today. You may be miserable. You may be fighting a mind battle that's got you down and out, depressed, fearful, anxiety, panic attacks. Just, but you can rejoice that you know who Jesus is. Do you know there's people all over the world Let's just start here. There's people sitting in church. There's people sitting in this, in this sanctuary this morning that don't know who Jesus is. They don't have the revelation of who Jesus is. Oh, they know about Jesus, but they don't have the revelation who Jesus is. Rejoice in the fact that you were born here in America to where you can freely worship God. Any God you want to for that matter. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's not a suggestion. I believe that's a commandment for the church. Because I'll tell you what joy will do for you. What does joy look like in your life? How do you know if you got it? Well, first of all, joy celebrates. It celebrates Jesus. You, it, when, hey, when the joy of the Lord's in you, you can't help but celebrate Jesus. The joy of the Lord gets excited. When it reads this book, people say, well, I just don't understand it. Well, you may not. Sometimes I don't either. But I'm still joyful that I get to read it. I'm joyful that the Spirit of God will open up the pages sometimes and reveal things to me. See, the joy of the Lord will cause you to love this book. The joy of the Lord sings. It worships. It praises. The joy of the Lord will cause you to give. Not grudgingly, not sparingly, or even out of necessity. But God loves a cheerful or a joyful giver. Worship team, you can come. And as they sung about this morning, joy surrenders. 
joy, truth, the joy of the Lord will cause you to surrender His will. The joy of the Lord will cause you to meditate upon His Word. And the joy of the Lord serves. I've said for years, you'll never be, the only time you're ever going to have true joy in your life is you're doing what God called you to do.